Mahalo and good morning, uh, soccer stakeholders and soccer lovers uh, in Kenya and uh, beyond. My name is Charity Wangoma, also known as uh, Mama Dio. Uh, I come from Eldoret, was in Gishu County. I've been a, a soccer stakeholder for the past four years, owning a football club, Bondeni FC. Uh, up until last year, I've been running a men's club, but uh, just uh, towards the end of last year, I decided to venture into women football. It's quite a shame and uh, quite a, a big scandal what's happening right now uh, to football, women playing football. Uh, the coaches of these uh, women football clubs, the managers, the players themselves, uh, it really is something that uh, it's not worth mentioning what is happening right now. Uh, women football in Kenya, uh, the first actually the first women league in Kenya was initiated in the year 1985. And uh, despite the many challenges that uh, the women football has, has faced, uh, th there have been several interruptions of the leagues uh, due to financial constraints. But uh, even with all that, the women football is still standing strong. The women keep playing without demanding much. There's no salary, there's no sponsorship, there's nothing coming in. But the women are strong and they, they, they are playing. It should be noted that the women football has been there for us for the same uh, time length as the main football. It's not something that we started yesterday. We played uh, for actually the same time as men have played. What is uh, bothering me right now, and what is bothering the women players, what is bothering women coaches, women referees right now, is just how much we are continually being regarded as second class secondary and less valuable than the men uh, that are in this industry. I think we are putting in as much energy, as much resources and as much focus as our male counterparts. So to be continually treated as second class is so alarming and so degrading. Yeah, recently football activities were interrupted due to COVID-19 not only the men that uh, were interrupted, it was the women as well. But when you look at things that are happening, a lot of focus is put on the, on, on the men. The other time, uh, FIFA allocated funds for cushioning uh, people that are vulnerable. And to our surprise and to our shock, it was agreed and decided that men are actually more vulnerable than women. It has left us wondering whether the meaning of vulnerability has changed its meaning. Hmm? You realize that there is nothing that has been allocated towards cushioning the, the, the ladies. These girls playing with no sponsorship. They earn no salary. They earn no monthly salary. They are surviving on much allowances. You play a game, you get 1,000 or 500 shillings, and that is supposed to push you throughout the week. But we don't, they, 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 they don't complain. They go on, they play. So right now, uh, since... Uh, February, there are no matches, meaning the girls are earning nothing. They are expected to continue paying their rent, taking care of their families, taking care of themselves. Women players actually have more needs than even the, the male players. It should be noted that physiologically we are, we are quite different from men. Our playing span is very short. You start playing at the age of 15. By 20 something, the society expects you to settle down, have a family, and raise it. So, we are supposed to make use of the few years that we have into building something out of soccer. But there's nothing to write home about for women footballers. It's a sad state of affairs right now. Betika uh, gave out 90 million for cushioning players against the effects of COVID 19. NSL players, KPL players benefited. What happened to women uh, Premier League players? Nothing. And nobody's talking about it. The other day, the Minister of Sports, who is apparently a lady, decided to cushion KPL players in the tune of 10,000 per month for the next three years, for the next three months, sorry, with nothing, with total disregard for the ladies. We are crying. We are worried. I'm actually very worried about uh, my daughter, Bikal, who is an aspiring footballer. 
this is somebody that wants to be a professional footballer, what am I to tell her? That there is nothing for her in football? Hmm? That she should forget about her dreams of becoming a professional footballer because there is nothing that she will get from it. It's a worrying situation, it's a worrying trend. The other time Harambe Starlet uh, brought in the, 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 the Sekafa Cup, got nothing, while just the previous year, Harambe Stars, the men brought it home and got lots of money. Look at our Harambe Starlet when they, they represented the country in Cameroon the other time, in 2016. They got a pulse 100,000. The, 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 the next year, the men did the same and got a whooping 1.6 million per player. Pay disparity, pay equity. This is one of the most uh, disputed things in, in women football. You realize that uh, the highest paid uh, KPL player takes home uh, around 200,000. What about the, the highest played uh, WPL player? 25,000. Hmm? I've got a question to ask. Does our sports minister earn less than her male counterparts uh, just because of her gender? Does she earn less because she's a woman? That's a question what's, what we're asking. In the last four years, we've had a deputy president of FKF who is a woman, Madame Doris Petro. Actually, when she was elected, uh, the women clubs celebrated. They thought at long last we are getting something. But no. Madam Doris Petro, I've got a question for you. How many women Premier League matches have you watched? Have you been to the field when Gaspo is playing Eldoret Falcons, for instance? When v Viga Queens are playing Eldoret Falcons, for instance? Have you attended any one match? Do you know the plights of these players and the coaches? You don't. Evidently, you don't. I'm wondering what happened when a cabinet meeting was, was, was being held and FKF attended and they decided about uh, the fate of vulnerable players. I'm wondering what happened during that meeting when Nick Mwendwa was vouching for the male clubs to be, to be cushioned. I'm wondering whether you, torn, whether, 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 whether you torn your wig off, whether you jumped on the table, torn your clothes, screamed, shouted, and pleaded that the girl shall be considered as well. I'd like to know. So far, we've not heard anything from you. you. You're quiet. Nothing is happening. You are nowhere to answer our questions. These are the questions that, that go on. Everybody is asking what's happening. Why is it that the women uh, the clubs, nobody, Akuna Mtetezi, Akuna Mtetezi, Wawadada, Shida We have you. You are the, you, 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 you're the, you're the, you're the, you're the you're the highest uh, woman, woman representative of women players. You're the woman that holds the highest office. Some of us are aspiring women representatives in our various counties, but we are worried if this is the trend. What are we going to tell the, 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 the players at the grassroots levels if there is no consideration at all for players at the Premier League level? Is there any hope for the women and the, the young girls that are playing at the, at the grassroots? What are we supposed to tell them? That okay, just just play on, but uh, know that uh, there, there's no future for you. There's no hope anyway. Kindly, we would like uh, these questions addressed. We would like these uh, scenarios addressed. There is no day uh, that uh, you would, that anyone would say that a man is more vulnerable than a woman. If the meaning of vulnerability changed yesterday, then we would like to be enlightened about that. We'd like to be t told about that. Hmm? It's not easy, it's not fair, it's unrealistic. These girls live in their own houses, they pay their, they pay their own rent. They are single mothers, they've got children to take care of. They've got parents back home that know that their, 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 their children do not uh, do what other, ch other girls did, getting married early to settle down, but rather ventured into football for their upkeep to sustain their families. Now what are they supposed to be telling their parents back home? It's things like this that make parents uh, deter their girls from venturing into football. It's very hard going to a parent, convincing the parent that the child is talented, that her daughter is talented, 
and that her daughter should join football because the, the first question that will be asked is how will that football be, be help this, this girl and how will the football help the family. The men are, are paid a lot and are able to take care of their families through football but the same cannot be said uh, about the girls. So it's my prayer, it's my request, it's my uh, demand actually right now that uh, this issue of ladies be addressed. Let's see uh, FIFA, let's see FKF and let's see the government allocating money for women footballers. Thank you very much.